Next, we'll take a look at the Thor controller panel. In the top part of Thor is the controller panel. You don't even have to look at the programmer if you don't want to. You just want to play Thor as a uh, simpler instrument. And um, we'll open it up. Looks cool. Let's talk about different things we can do in the controller panel. It's similar to what you find in a uh, combinator, but not exactly the same. First, we've got our pitch uh, and mod wheel and pitch bend range, stuff we've seen before. And polyphony, that's how many notes you can play simultaneously before you can't play another, or the first one you played is stolen. That's a key part of a lot of long decay analog sounds, as you can hold the sustain pedal down and play really complex stuff and it doesn't get too muddy because you're stealing away the old notes. And in fact, very cool feature, um, you can control the release polyphony, so how many notes can actually sustain when you let go. You could make that number somewhat less than your voices. That's sort of the best of both worlds. You could play lots of notes, but only have a few causing mud and hanging on there. But that's what that does. Then you've got um, your keyboard modes, same thing we've seen before, mono legato, kind of like a, a monophonic synth, mini moog, mono retrig, retriggers the envelopes every time you hit a key, while legato only triggers on the first hit, and then until you let go of another note, there's no new trigger. So I let go, then it retriggers again, retrigger retriggers every key regardless of whether I'm playing legato or not. And then polyphonic plays all 16 voices. And then we have portamento section, cool feature. We can have the notes just slide from one to another. Or even cooler, an auto feature where we can hold down any notes we play one at a time with releasing the note in between, staccato have no portamento, but if we hold one down and then hit other notes, all the other notes we hit will be portamento. It'll slide around. Then we have our trigger section where we trigger the uh, instrument from MIDI and the step sequencer, or not. Note on indicator tells us when our MIDI keyboard is sending something, or sequencer. Then we have some programmable controllers like the combinator where you can program these to be anything you want them to be. They show up here in the list of uh, modifiers, Rotary 1 and Rotary 2. You can just double click here and change the name of whatever you want to change. So the knobs are kind of self-explanatory. You could route the output of a knob to a bunch of different things if you wanted to. So in this case, they've routed the decay subtly from uh, for, for the time decay of those sounds. Um, it's also a chorus enable. These two controllers are just a button. They're for on-off type parameters. And we can look at those modifiers, button one and button two. So a chorus on-off. Again, you can just see they've routed button one to chorus dry wet control. And that will turn on this dry wet control here all the way to dry or wet. Um, then we've got tremolo. And that's sending um, LFO2 to uh, amplifier pan to this knob here amount scaled by button 2. So you get 0% unless that button is pressed. Press the button, the stereo. Something that is new here is next to the button you have this little display here where we can uh, piano roll up a, a note, a note value. That's kind of a weird thing. Let's go ahead and roll up to a note that's in the middle of our range here, like uh, C3 perhaps. So now when I play a C3, it switches on the stereo tremolo. Interestingly, it doesn't play any C th doesn't play any notes though. So if I play a chord, I'll play C2, E2, G, and then C3. <laughs> I can't C3, there we go. So when I hit C3, instead of playing a note, it turns on the stereo tremolo. So interesting the way they worked that out. Not so probably good to sit in the middle of your uh, chordal range like that, but you could put it right at the bottom of your keyboard so it's the lowest note you can reach and you're not normally playing it. That way you could grab it with one finger if you wanted to switch something on, switch on a sequence or something for live performance, or like this tremolo effect, you know, if you have an extra finger hanging around. So 
So I'm just hitting that uh, C1 with my left hand who wasn't doing anything else. I don't know, kind of a weird feature. You don't use it every day, but there you have it. Or off, now no notes will trigger this switch on and off. And then master volume, that's it for the controller panel.